Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the General Banner Podcast. Uh, before we start, quick shout out to our sponsors, the OG sponsor, the first legit sponsor to get on board with this podcast, Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Uh, it's primarily a male groomer. You know, it's for male grooming. They've got this lawnmower 3.0. Uh, they put together all these packages. You can get a whole pile of shit. You can get your ball toner. You can get your ball deodorant. And uh, you can get the lawnmower 3.0. You can get this weed whacker, which is for jamming up your ears or your butthole. Uh, but just those two. It's got a good action. Uh, <laughs> the lawnmower 3.0. It's going to fall now. It's going to be a nightmare. The lawnmower 3.0, anti snag technology, which means you could pretty much shave anything in there. You know, most your big worry most of the time is that you're gonna you're gonna use one of these products on a delicate area, like your scrotum, and uh, you're gonna get it all jammed up in there, and uh, it'll be like you're trimming a hedge, and a, there's an extra thick branch, and it's just, it just gets stuck. That ain't happening with this lawnmower 3.0. It's got plastic blades. It just skims over your nuts beautifully. And you're walking around with a delicious package. The reason I'm, the reason they uh, sponsor this podcast is because the listeners get 20% off if they go to manscaped.com, use the code GENBAND1 at the checkout. Bro, not only are you getting 20% off the price, you shave your pubes away, you're getting 20% off that shaft. You're welcome, guys, manscaped.com. And as you know, February is coming up. Can't say it ever. February is coming up. Valentine's Day is coming up. There's different packages for your package. Go on to manscaped.com. They've got a whole pile of stuff. You can get it all in one box. They'll throw in some boxers. They're very soft on on your pouch. And uh, yeah, sort your man out. Sort sort your man out in your life for, for Valentine's Day. They're also launching a cologne, which is American for aftershave. And they're gonna launch that. And you'll not be you'll be walking around with a smooth sack. It's just smelling like a rich dude. If you've coupled it up with the ball deodorant. Good smelling nuts. Good smelling sort of neck and wrist area. The two important areas. And uh, yeah, just a smooth sack. Manscaped.com, check it out. The General Banter Podcast with Paul and Jettis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the General Banter Podcast. We need a new name for this. It might be the Vlogcast. We're on location. Are we allowed to say where we are? We're in Lorne. <laughs> <laughs> My guest today, uh, we'll go through your job titles in a second. Chris Big Bear McNaughton. Cheers for having us down. No, thank you for coming down, mate. Let's go through it, right? <laughs> there's, a, there's a list. Gym owner? Gym owner. Competitive strongman? Mm-hmm. Tell me what else you do. Um, ambassador for mental health. Um, ambassador for LGBTQ. Um, uh, sort of just big gay public figure. <laughs> big gay <game laughs> public figure. <laughs> that's, like, that's like the majority of it. Yeah. So the, the I, I actually I, I watched a little t- like tiny clip of you before. It was like a little feature interview. It was about three minutes long. I, I, I don't know what it was for, and they just kind of ripped through. The oh, hit. was that on Facebook? Yeah. I, it was um, Pink News. Pink News. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was sort of the thing that sort of blew up for me. You know, yeah. was that like. One thing just randomly came along, um, and we headed over uh, to London, filmed it. We actually filmed it in London, and then that afternoon we got the train up to Manchester, and then the radio interviews in Manchester and stuff, and then a big messy night out in Manchester. But um, yeah, it went viral. Like it just sort of went because it worldwide. is. It, it's an odd combination of things, and even in that video, you're talking about like you know. You know, people talk, you know, is there any homophobia in, in like strongman and stuff? And you're like, not really, because everyone's so fucking masculine. It's a very masculine yeah. thing. And then you throw the gayness in, yeah. you know? <laughs> and for some reason, that's a, I mean, there, there was a guy on Joe Rogan as well. He was like a big LGBT, you know, deadlifting in the, in the rainbow socks and everything. But why do people think that's so weird? It, it, it's like an odd combination of things, just two worlds yeah. colliding, really. It's it's it's, it's totally non stereotypical of what yeah. people expect as a gay man. Um, like the strongman sport, like don't get me wrong, like there's dickheads everywhere, like you know what I mean. But the sport as a whole is really dead on and really cool about it. And I think I think a lot of that is because the guys, you know, the competitors and that there, they're used to having 
a lot of admirers and followers mm -hmm. from the gay community. So oh, right, they, okay. they become pretty cool with it, like, you know, just by having so many fans that are that way. But um, it, it is, it, it's very non-stereotypical. It, it's definitely like, you know, um, a, a bit of a headline sort of title, you know, yeah. Gay Strowman, and a lot of news and media has, has jumped on the back of it since, you know, it sort of came about. Yeah. There is a, I don't know why sport is like the last fucking hurdle for like LGBT type activism or right? Isn't it though? It's like, yeah. you're still yet, I mean, is there a gay footballer? Is there anyone has there, comfortably come out as, as gay a, yet? a few stories I've heard, um, about about gay footballers and that there, and it seems to be that whenever they come out, um, then the career finishes brave and quick sort of after that there, you know. It, it, it's In grassroots, I think it's getting better because there, there there's a lot of organisations that's putting a lot of focus in to, you know, um, building things up and making them better, but, like, it, it's a long way to go when it comes to, like, football. And that rugby doesn't seem to be doing too bad. Like, you know, there's a lot of professional rugby players yeah, like who Gareth are gay Thomas now. and stuff, he's... Yeah. A big advocate at the start, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't know why UFC isn't getting a bit more of a, of like a gay following, maybe especially with mm. the women. A lot of gay women yeah. are fighting, and there, there there's these high profile fights where like, you know, you'll have it was like was it like Amanda Nunes fighting someone else, you know, both gay, both in, like married, and it was like this headline fight, like a huge deal, and mm. they were like, I feel like they weren't even making that big a deal about that. But maybe yeah. that's a good thing too. Maybe they're like, maybe not trying to ham it up. They're just like, this yeah. is fucking what happens now. Sure, it is that borderline thing where you want to raise awareness and make things better, but then you also don't want to like, you know, poke at the bear type of thing where you sort of piss other people off and mm -hmm. make it too big a deal and too big a thing. Like, you know, it, it, it like it's an obvious cash in. Like, yeah, you like don't want to make yeah. the whole thing about, you know, um, you know, the whole thing, the whole sport about being gay, like, you know, it's just good to raise awareness and it's good to, like, change people's opinions and mindsets, but at the same time, you don't want to, like, just overpower the whole yeah. thing, like, you know. Because I've seen that, like, even with, like, bars and stuff in, in Belfast around the, the whole gay cake scenario, mm. do you remember? Yeah. And people were overselling it, like, we're gay friendly and fucking pride flags outside mm. and they have they have a fucking uh, drag night and everything and you're like, where's this come out of? Like, all of a sudden they're like, nah, you can come here, we'll take all your fucking money too. <laughs> you know, it's like just complete fucking overkill. But uh, yeah, we fucking, we jumped ahead of ourselves there a wee bit. How, how the fuck do you get into strongman? Other than, I feel like there's certain sports, you know, you're gonna just be pushed down that path a little yeah. bit because of how you look, or yeah. there's a natural strength. There's, there's no one like, fuck, I used to play a lot of badminton. Now I feel like lifting giant logs above my head. <laughs> I, like, to be honest, uh, Strawman's the thing I always watched on TV. Um, there's people like Terry Hollands and Glenn Ross and stuff that I watched as a wee and, and sort of like, used to get dead excited about, you know, Strawman being on the TV, you know, and I always used to grab my dad and the two of us used to run in and watch it. And, but it was very much so like, um, Back then, it was just like, you know, I watched WWE and want to be a wrestler type yeah. of thing. Like, you know, it wasn't like, it was just something you loved to watch and you were fascinated about. But um, I played I played rugby for a long time and played rugby at a decent level. Um, Who did you play for? Or where'd I you played, play? played for played for Lauren and then I moved to Balamina and then I was like in the, the Ulster, like, not the Ulster Ulster, but like the Ulster A's or the Ulster Youth or whatever, as you call them. Um, and I, Scrum I, half? <laughs> <laughs> on the wing. I remember, like, we had a coach in, in school, in fact, and he was, I think he played at a decent level when he was younger, he was like a twin, and uh, again, big stocky fella, and he's like, you can train anyone to play anywhere, but you're born a prop. Uh, <laughs> I was like, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> I, went, I, I went on the tight head when I was about 10 years old, and like, never changed. I went to loose once before, yeah. and literally, Crouch hold and gauge, and I fell out the side <laughs> of the scrum. <laughs> they just landed in the arch, and I just turned around, nod to the guy, switched back around, went back yeah. in the tight head. But no, I like, I loved rugby, and a great, brilliant, like, I'm so glad that I had rugby because I say I started when I was like 10, like P7 or something like that. And it's good that I grew up in a sport because, you know, otherwise, like, I was born 11 pounds and I didn't stop growing. Like, I was always a stone for my age. Yeah. So when I was like, 14, 14 stone, right up to I was 19, no, 18, I was 18 stone. 
And then when I started going 19 and 20, then you sort of add an extra stone and a half each year for a while. Like, Jesus. But um, I just, I got burnt out a wee bit rugby, you know. I, I love the idea of competing in strongman, and I love the idea of, you know, when you lift more than the person beside you, you win. You know, there's no, yeah. nothing holds you back. If, if you're the judges strongest, are like, yeah. yeah. If you're the strongest, you're the strongest. You know, nobody decides where, if you're getting a place here or a place there, you know, so. I moved over into Strongman and and this, I, I just remember doing, because this is going back, what, like 11 years? Yeah, 11 years and um, Strongman wasn't a thing. You had World's Strongest Man on the TV yeah. and you had nothing else. It was just World's Strongest Man. And World's Strongest Man is a, a TV show. It's not like a stadium show. Right enough. So it's just yeah, TV. Yeah, there's not like a leg of, of that. It's just, that's what they call it for the telly. Yeah, it's just, you, I think back then it was mostly invites that took the World's Strongest Man. Um, where as now there is a qualifying set up through Giants Live and stuff, and the Giants Live shows that they're the shows that are filling arenas of ten thousand yeah. people, like you know. But back then, like strongman in Ireland, I think there was in total twelve strongmen in Ireland, um, and the first competition I went to was in a car park. I think it was a car park of a gym with like fifty people watching, and that was an Ireland strongest man, like yeah. Um, but like. Stuck with it, like I just, I just love it. But I was naturally like I never touched weights till I was yeah. about nineteen or twenty. Yeah. Like every so often, I like grabbed a set of dumbbells and flung them around. But then I was like, the hell with this, like you know. Because it's like, is it a thing you decide to do, and then you're like, fuck, my whole regime, or well, if you didn't have one before, I suppose you're just starting to lift or whatever. But like, I'm gonna have to start fucking eating tons and like whatever. Is it a mm. whole? Even if you were like say like doing like a power lifter you know it's probably like a whole change of direction yeah the strongman stuff it like i think crossing over from rugby the strongman was easier than uh, I, I did try to go back and play rugby again but because i had done so much heavy lifting like every time you like overstride overstride it or like try to sprint your like hamstrings and calves just popped <laughs> off because they're just not used to like being flexed in that way when like, people are know. putting your socks on for you <laughs> and tying your boots you're like maybe the rugby days are over but um <laughs> oh, i was uh, it was getting rough like but um and I, I tried to play went to play american football for a while and i would love that like that was great crack like it was just like at the time they were were the Carrick fergus knights um started doing a bit of training and that there with them got all the kit remember first time doing a drill I just ran at a fella like balls to the wall full speared him got up and like that did not hurt one bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> because you know you had helmets yeah. and pads and all and i was like in rugby that would hurt you like yeah you know, but this didn't hurt at all like it felt brilliant but Again, I think it was like not long in, like a couple of months in, and then went to spring and the like calf popped off for like um, I was four calf tears and that, and three calf tears and that one. Popped and off is not a term that you hear very often. <laughs> Most people are like, I strained it or pulled it or something. Like, you have big calves, but I have like freakishly big calves. My yeah. calves are like 28, 30 inches. So <laughs> like, they just rip Put a pair of jeans on them. <laughs> <laughs> Two wee pairs oh, of jeans. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, see you last time. We were, we were at Germany there. We were over um, at the BMW Walt, you know, the BMW Museum oh, in, right, okay, in, yeah. in um, uh, Germany. Um, me and John was over, and um, on the way back, it was coming through airport security, and there was, like, nobody there because it was COVID and stuff. And um, I went through, and normally the thing beeps because if you're close to the sides, it beeps. Yeah. So I'd always go in like that area, <laughs> go, 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 go through sideways. And it didn't beep. And then this guy was like, oh, you go up here. And then I was like, fucking, you know, jobs body. Like, you know, yeah. like, just, why, are you, why are you searching me? And um, so he's like, I do search. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had my hands up like that there. And he just, <laughs> he just went straight down and went, <laughs> oh, they're real. <laughs> I just burst out laughing. Yeah. I was like, why do I not have this in video? Like, do you just have like class? two bricks of coke in the back ear? In the back ear. He literally calves coming back from Germany. Searched both my calves and I was like, oh, they're real. On you go. <laughs> Turned around to the woman. I was like, oh, they're real. They're real. I <laughs> like I, I don't know. What weight? What weight are you now? Right now. Now I'm one hundred and I think I'm one hundred and fifty eight kilos. Yeesh. Um, What's on stones? I think it's like 23 or something like that there, I'm not sure. Dear, dear. So like, I'm fairly thick, you know, not strong man thick, clearly, mm. but you know, in day-to-day -day life. Athletic. Athletic. <laughs> <laughs> Rotund. <laughs> but like, 
you must fucking struggle with everything. You know what I mean? Like I'll sit in a plane and be like, and then name a fucking your your shoulders are spilling over into the fucking aisle and all the trolleys are hitting you. And <laughs> I remember playing rugby one time and there's a fella <laughs> who uh, he was notoriously half blind. Like he would play rugby but fucking you know no contacts on, couldn't see a thing. Like one time he ducked under a tackle and these two boys headbutted each other and fucking knocked his whole teeth out and everything. Couldn't see a thing. And he came up to me and he's like, oh, get us all new shoulder pads. Smack. And like fucking whack me in the shoulder. And I was like, no. No shoulder pads. Big fucking stinger red oh, hand me. on the shoulder. But like, you must fucking, like, what do you do? What, buying jeans, buying fucking. It used to be like, I, I, I did go a lot bigger than I am now because I was 29 stone at the time. Jesus Christ. And, Statically, like I was like incredibly strong. It, it felt fucking amazing lifting weights. Like, yeah. like it just was effortless. Like everything was effortless. The uh, stairs, it, not so good. Yeah. <laughs> stairs. You went through a fortune in beds. Like, Seriously? Just, I, just like crushing I was beds. Three beds in the one year that I bust. <laughs> Slate beds were never a go after that. There, like, and then the bed I had. I was need a photo. Like, I was at home. I was living at home with my dad at the time. We just got big books and put the books and all under the bed that you stop it you know going down but like yeah it's just and then everything sort of like you judge everything like before you sit down on something you're judging it you go to a restaurant like it's just it's not it's nice competing and being that strong but everything else in life is just disgusting because like. i know when you were talking about before being at that show where eddie hall pulled that big fucking mm. giant deadlift and he was like you know big fat face mm -hmm. and fucking just blown out and was it not like his wife or something was like you gotta knock this in the head yeah. like this isn't gonna fucking end well and i fucking shredded still yeah. huge like i like 100 and i think he's like 164 kilo at the moment and just pack, like. i like crazy six pack too. Yeah. Like the people don't understand his six pack is the same size as a keg of Guinness. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like not, actual like, fucking six pack. People don't realize until you're standing beside a strong man how big strong men are. Like yeah. people, you like can you look at people on TV and stuff. Like I think you know why people say TV it puts ten pounds on you. Yeah. I think it takes about five stone off a fucking strong man. Like. Mm. Because you know, I, I, you get the dysmorphia the other way. <laughs> You're like, fuck man, I look like I'm dying there. You look at it and you go, jeez, I look like I'm about twenty five stone. <laughs> <laughs> I look so skinny. And you start eating. <laughs> For fuck's sake! But like, whenever you were like, um, there was a couple of shows I was at and Eddie was competing in and stuff. I've seen him a few times, like you know, up close to person. And he's just like, he, he's not that. I know what you're going to say. Tall, is he? He's six foot four, six foot oh, three. Oh, is he? I thought he was. But that's, what, that's, that, that's one of the things, you know, when somebody is so big, they don't look as tall. Uh, like and he's like, more in proportion. Yeah, like You would get that a lot with guys, like, yeah. you know, where guys, but I bet he's not that tall. I was like, he's fucking six foot three, like, you know. But. Aye, maybe just in that world, but then, I'm sure, you know, at a certain point, height's probably, like, goes against you. Yeah. Well, you I, well, when I was... What height are you? I'm 5'11". What was that? Is that Which is regular really, or small? No, it's really strong it? and strong, man. Like, uh, really right. sm like, there's a few things that... I guess that, you know, the taller you are, um, it helps in some of it. It used to be years ago that tall people were shit pressers and that tall people were bad at deadlifting. Mm. Now, like, some of the best... Like, well, who currently old, holds the world records, half the world, and, you know, he's the tallest strong man pretty much ever. Yeah. And nice he, boxing he, for he does, no, he does good over 200 kilo log press are really dead because he's retired now like but and then brian shaw tall as hell brian log presser brian deadlifter yeah. like so that's sort of that used to be a thing years ago you just would have seen a tall strong man and you'd have been like oh he'll be shit at deadlifting and pressing but he'll be good at <laughs> but moving, they all just at they're all so you know the bigness is just all round mm -hmm. they're in proportion they're fucking just huge yeah. like that's why bigger people can't get away with sort of um you know carrying the more weight like you know guys Guys, you know, six, you know, six foot five upwards, they can carry twenty eight stone comfortably. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody has a size and strong man you get to, and you could be, you could still move, still be fit, um, but if you go over it, that's where you start to. Because when I was at my biggest, one of my best mates, um, and he he's, was a head referee for a long time, still is a, a referee at Giants Life. You know, he turned around to me as like Chris, like statically he says you can't be touched in Ireland at the moment he says you're strong as a bull like he says but you he says you move like a three-legged bull he's like you need to do something about this <laughs> so I did like a strip way down I'm on a strip day down I probably was lifting and competing better than I was, was when I was heavy is that easy enough for you just because I remember you saying you struggled with like eating when you have to when yeah. you get when you have to like really fucking 
force it into you. I, I hate the eating side. You just come back to normal and the weight just kind of shreds off you? Yeah, pretty much. Like, you know, like, um, I sort of know, well, the way I'm sitting on at the moment, I'll maintain between 4,000 and 4,500 calories. I'll gain at 5,000 plus, and if I eat less than 4,000, I'll lose weight. So I sort of know at my body weight now what it takes. Um, so it was the same back then. You knew how many calories you need to be eating every day to ever stay or keep It's mad going. how pumped, that, pumped up that out, those numbers are. Mm. Well, they're like if, some boys. If eat a, a regular lot more. person was eating four thousand a day, they'd get fucking fat super yeah. quick. Like, I know a lot of guys eat between eight and ten thousand, but I just, I just can't do it. It's disgusting. Like, it's just it's, like another job. Fucking, it's every half an hour. It's so, it just grinds you down so much. Like the training, enjoy the training. Training's good crack. The other big side of it is the recovery, but you don't like mind the recovery. You know, getting sports therapy done, massages, ice baths, and stuff like you know. Not exactly enjoyable, like you know, we don't mind it, but the, the proper bit that grinds you down, in my mind, the straw man is the eating, it just never stops. Like, yeah, and I, you know, I remember I've watched a few videos of people doing like a day in the life or whatever, and it shows you their this is my 10,000 calorie day or whatever. Mm. But like, how the fuck do you train around that? Because someone, you know, like, especially Eddie Hall, it was Eddie Hall I was watching, giant fucking fry up, tons of sausages, and eating yeah. all this shit, drives to the gym, and he's doing like big squats. Yeah. 40 minutes later yeah like would you not just be fucking like big, big, boking all over the place and i was like Mah. best squat left, best squat and deadlift pre-workout meal is about a stew yeah like, i pull, <laughs> i have always pulled my best deadlift about a stew <laughs> swear to god like i i would like i swear by that i don't know what it is don't know i don't i just don't know but when i've had a bout of stew i mean like i pulled the best day last night like. you're just walking out in the competition yeah. with a t-shirt so it's just bow stew <laughs> sponsored by that's the new one get one of them fucking giant tubs pear strong stew <laughs> full irish beef yeah fucking right i remember my mate saying he, he had two quarter pounders and a fucking fanta or something before he went to the gym and he's like in there through the the bar through the roof mm. like just i don't know just probably tons of fucking sugar and whatever yeah. in one go like but food is honestly like it's, it's not a matter of being greedy with it it is literally a matter of like when you don't eat enough you're not as strong like you can feel it but when you do when you have a good like if you say the past two or three days you've been eating good your training's good if the past you know day or two you've had like a few slip ups and and um fuck ups where you're eating and stuff then the next fuck thing ups as in you don't eat enough yeah then the next thing your training's like a struggle like it's hard for you it's like it's easy it's like lifting the weights is easy or let, you know, following your program is easy when you're eating right when you mess up when you're eating then it, it's really hard every session becomes hard then wow. like, it, it does like 100 <coughs> percent knowledge of nutrition is huge and it's probably something that i've only took on board um maybe the last three years and i honestly i wish that when i started off I focused on that mm. more than anything else. Yeah, you know, it was proper training and proper nutrition. It's it's it sounds just the opposite of what a regular person thinks they should do. You know, it's mm. like oh fucking, I'll eat light and I'll be able to like train better. Mm. But I suppose because it's just so much energy and giant weights, it's like you just need the fucking yeah. fuel pump it. Well, you're you moving dur yourself like during workouts and all. Yeah, like moving yourself. Like see during the, this lockdown at the moment, like like. It's been, you sort of feel that you, you're back to being like a, a pro strongman again, where all you're doing is getting up every morning and you know, I, I train in the morning and I train at night and then you're eating in between and you're doing stretching. Or, like, I literally have all day at the moment to focus on training and it feels yeah. like a pro. Um, so the food's been good, the recovery's been good and like every session that my coach has given me so far, like, it's just been easy. Yeah. Like, really easy, like. So the rest and the food and all Huge part. Like, even just, like... If you're over 100, if you're 50 kilo, 150 kilo plus, just having the fuel to go day to day, yeah, like that, that takes a lot. That's probably about three and a half thousand calories just to like move your arse around. That's wild, isn't it? That's so that's so much. That's like, hateful, like it's the one side that you know. And then saying that, like I could never be a lighter weight strong man because I do like my food, but I just don't like. I sort of like I like eating, but I don't like. That I have to eat if you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> it would just be, be nice it. to chill, like by by choice. Um, fucking uh, yeah, it's it's wild. It's just it's just crazy numbers all across the board. Yeah. The food and the calories and the fucking the weights and everything. So, I, I mean, I, what's the scene like in Ireland in general for like strongman? 
now it's like how it's, it's grown a lot over the years like is, it like is there a facebook group started? with like 16 people in it <laughs> you need, that's it you just fucking everybody knows each other it's it's there's there's different weight categories in strongman now like there's which didn't really have before there's like under 90s, under 105, and then the heavyweights, and you have a lot more novice shows and stuff, you know, with guys coming up through. Um, and then your your heavyweights are uh, more pro athletes and so on, man. You probably have the guts of, say, in, in total, 25 good strong men. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it, the sports came along a lot. Like, Ireland's probably still behind um, the other nations quite a bit. You know, we're still playing catch up, like, but. You know, most years Ireland's strongest man's on RTE now, which is good that it's getting te- TV coverage, which yeah. helps it grow a lot. Um, UK's used to be filmed in Ireland now, but it's moved across to the mainland because the big crowds are in the mainland. Like last time I was competing at UK's, you were walking out to 6,000 people, which you'd never get in a Northern Ireland. <laughs> yeah, like, you know. it's one of them things like when it's on, everyone watches it. You know, mm. it's a, I think people, probably even TV execs, don't know how entertaining it is. Yeah. And they're putting on fucking Ninja Warrior and all this stupid yeah. shit. And someone's granny's like snapping her knee off from the yeah. first jump. And the strong man's way more fucking exciting yeah. to watch. Like The first year I, I competed at Britain's Strongest Man, there wasn't even TV or anything like that. It was at an, an expo, uh, yeah. like a fitness expo. Um, that was my first year sort of as like a, a baby shark coming into the big... Big, yeah. big sea type of thing, like you know, and <laughs> singing you, the song and all. You were literally like shitting yourself the whole way through, like. But like, um, you know, it didn't even have TV then. Now Britain's Strongest Man's in an arena with like ten thousand people, full TV coverage and all. Like it's just huge now, like Unreal. huge. Like so, it's good to see the sports going where it's going. You know, I think things things that have helped is like Eddie Hall, Half Four Beyonce, and their public profiles have definitely helped it grow. I actually think. CrossFit has helped a wee bit too, you know, because you do see a lot of people moving into strongman when they start at like CrossFit, which is like a baby baby weight version of strongman, realise that they have a lot of strength potential yeah. and then they, they jump into strongman. So I do think that it, it has helped somewhat, like, you know. To, do you ever take a crack at any of the CrossFit records? You know, like there's one, there, Eddie Hall did one there where it was just like overhead fucking things yeah. or whatever. And because the weight is like a fucking you know, bed pillow to him. Yeah. He's just like, bang, bang, <laughs> bang, bang. And you're dying. Like, his fucking face was like, beetroot. Like, <laughs> I think Brian Shaw done a similar one to it where he went head to head with a crossfit or not there. But I, I, I thought about it and some people have called me out and that there, you know, for like YouTube and stuff like that. Like, let's do a head to head. And I'm like, I just don't like losing. You know what I mean? So I'm not gonna, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, let's do a head to head then on a CrossFit event, and then let's do a head to head with Max Deadlift. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's obviously I'm going to win one and you're going to win the other. Just, but just wrap it up in a CrossFit. It say it's like a deadlift ladder, you know, and you just, you just <laughs> fucking keep lifting. And then they cut off at a certain point and you just keep playing on. Um, you, you, do you have the nickname Bear before you even fucking, you know, uh, uh, in that other video? It, it was almost like you were saying, like, <laughs> someone had said, is, it, is that bear is in, is in, like, the gay bear type yeah. thing? And you're like, no, what's that? And then did you say anything? You, like, looked into it, and you're like, fuck, I am a gay bear. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had a fucking Google it. <laughs> I don't have a I'm sure that was an eye-opener for uh, the first time. Was, in the middle of a restaurant when I did Google it, too, like, and they're shitting myself what popped up on the phone. But, um, no, that was a good friend of mine, Lawrence Shally. He's actually my coach, and I brought him over to referee a show. And at the time, I had a, a powerlifting club going called the Big Bear Powerlifting Club. Um, and we were out for a few drinks afterwards, you know, and he had sort of mentioned, he says, you know, because you're called the Big Bear Club, he says, I thought you were like a Myers. And as, as I said before, like, Strongman do have a lot of Myers from that yeah. community, you know. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, you know, like, you know, Bear, he says, you know, gay bears and stuff, and gay admirers. And he's like, ah, oh. and I was like, so I was all right. I got, oh, fuck. <laughs> got the phone out. It was like, gay bear. <laughs> Were you not a, did you, did you not come and, out at that point? Or no, I was long with engaged at all and all the time. Like, it was like pure locked up in the closet. Like, but um, the whole time, I mean, that fascinates me a wee bit. Is it like, I mean, we don't have to put this in if it's like too personal or no. whatever, but it's like, what, what's that like being a gay? Is that just because. You think that's the fucking path you have to go down, or it's like I, I or did you out, need something to like fucking open your eyes a wee bit and be like, oh shit, what the fuck? A bit, a bit of both. Like, like I, I, I came out when I was twenty eight, um, and I knew I was gay when I was ten years old. 
Right. Like that's the first time I remember like being attracted to the guys. Um, um, but like to be honest, I was always very 50-50. Like I could go one way or the other. Like okay. it was always that way. Like so you chose to go the direction that makes life a lot easier, you know mm. what I mean? And like you know, I was in a lot of relationships with girls and all the rest of it, and genuinely at the time you were sort of happy, but then also knowing that something really wasn't right, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's not as if you were sitting there every day going, oh, this is awful, you know, I want to be, you know, gay and all the rest of it. It was just that you were dead on, you were happy in it, um, but then you just knew that something was really missing. So, like, I I remember I, I came out of a, a relationship and I was just, I think I was pretty much burnt out with a relationship with girls. And um met this guy from on up country, um, and for about a year and a half, we were everybody knew us as being best friends, Aye. and uh, but we were actually in a relationship, but we never told anybody. Yeah. Um, so that gave me like because up until that point, I was just like right, I could do shit with guys, but I could never actually see myself dating a guy. Okay. You know, that was just that was a no go. Like you know, like oh, I could never have a boyfriend, and I could yeah. never be actually gay and stuff. And then whenever uh, we we did it for for a long time. It was just like. This is actually really cool. <laughs> it's really easy, <laughs> and like yeah. this is like just opened up that world to me quite a bit. So um, that gave me a, a bit of a wake up call. As in, all right, you've probably been lying to yourself quite a bit. Like you know, really. So it nearly had to be like more. brought out of you a, a, a little bit. I just couldn't picture it or imagine it. And there is a huge difference between like um, a gay relationship and a homosexual or heterosexual relationship. You know, like massively different way of life like everything's very very different you know um everything's very sort of very chill and very effortless <laughs> like there's no like i was doing an interview there a couple of weeks ago and you guys just what are you the, trying to say women are a different? nightmare chris <laughs> is that what you're trying to say i just feel there's a lot less graft i don't feel that i'm sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> i just I just like don't feel you have to put in. The, like, you do put work in. You put work into every relationship, but it's just like, do you know, like if if like you know, if you ever have a fallout and you fall out with your bird, like, you, you can't watch. smack her. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch what you say. Like yeah. you know what I mean. You're like, on eggshells. If me and me and John ever fall out, it's like you're a dickhead. You're a dickhead, and yeah. you know, then it's like fine back you know on I mean? all like, you yeah. just like sort of like <laughs> i don't think fellas have the stamina to like hold it you know like keep it going for like days and weeks uh, and all they're just like I if, can't if anybody's the huffy one it would be me like but like yeah you just stomping off oh, just pure, <laughs> pure straw. wrecking the house on the like, way. i'm huffing at least for three days because this year but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, i don't know i just find it that easier and then um whenever whenever i, I did come out then um, I actually went over to London first because I needed to sort of understand a lot of shit. Was, there's a lot of shit to learn. Like, like uh, honestly, the god, like, like, see, going from one to the other. Like, why is the music so shy? Don't <laughs> do your head in. <laughs> I, I actually love gay music. Like. Yeah, I know. I've I've been in every fucking gay spot in in the country, like for one reason or, or another. And the whole time I was just like, lads, put something decent on for fuck's sake. Drop <laughs> my phone because this is fucking desperate. <laughs> There's then like the, the cheesy tunes sometimes are, are a bit much. Would like, I qualify as a bear or am I not bear enough? No, you'd no. be a bear. Like, uh, Would I? Uh, you see, they, 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 must just, they must just be able to smell it off you, the straightness, you know, because every straight lad has that thing where you're like, right, someone's birthday, we're going to fucking whatever club. Mm. And you're like, fucking, I'm going to have to be beating these fellas away here with a stick. Yeah. And you just walk through like a ghost, like, <laughs> no, nobody. <laughs> All right, then, fuck this. <laughs> this music is shit. <laughs> Your whole club shit, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. We're all getting ignored by five. <laughs> Bunch of bitches around this other place. You know what I mean? But I don't know. So I would qualify it. That's good to know. Because there's a whole straight bear movement now. You know that? I think people are hashtagging it now just for a bit of attention. Sorry. There's like fellas with like fucking, like a, they've got their fucking wife and kids and all in the photo and then he puts on a pair of Speedos and he's all like, I'm a fucking gay bear. I don't know. That's, there, is, there is a lot of people like, you know, like, love the attention like i'm i i love the attention like i'm a big like see when you don't get it so much over here like nobody over here really gives a shit who i am like but when you go to soho in london like you know i'd be pretty well known over there so when you do go about you know and walking around and going in the bars and all like you know 
people know know me quite well and be coming up and that there like and the tension's nice like but yeah. I know a lot of guys you know who are who are gym goers and like you know you do get the hey, I'm not sure we'll go out one night we we'll go fancy going a night out or, you know we'll go, and you know what they're at like you know the next thing well we go to a gay bar you know and uh, you're like you fuckers just want to be hit on all night you know and get the attention <laughs> like but. That, that's one thing that's you know give us that uh, you know just fucking <laughs> flexing all over the place so. just standing with the, the, their, their drink the whole night like Aye. that with a pure bicep that heavy shot. is it <laughs> that fucking woo woo or whatever <laughs> give me two drinks and just stand <laughs> <laughs> you need three of them so you have to press it together <laughs> but, fuck's um, sake no that's no honestly like me you know Dave Elliott the comedian oh yeah 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 D- definitely a bear yeah, you know yeah, yeah. big thicky uh, me and him joke all the time just fucking you know, he'll send me something and hashtag straight bear and like all this here shit. Like <laughs> first, the first time, one of the first times I went to the Soho, I went because I still didn't know a lot about the whole bear thing, and I was like, I'm gonna. How, go to how many uh, off the top of your head is there breakdown for like gay men, like the oh, subcategories? The, um, there's bear, there's cub. Right. So a cub would be like a young bear. Um, there's twink. A twink is like, um, oh, uh, be more like. Skinny, yeah, younger, feminine, right. maybe. Um, otter, otter would be. I don't know, as What's well. now? He's, uh, I'd be an otter. Like. Oh, you sexy we <laughs> otter. That's the name of the podcast, there. <laughs> sexy we <VR>. otter. <laughs> I an otter would be somebody who is a, like a bit, um, a bit sort of hairy. Okay, uh, but, but slimmer. So like, a, a, a twink would be somebody who's who's more like slim, athletic, but like non-hairy. Okay. So and then an otter was basically that, but you fire on a bit of hair. What if you're a what if you're a bear build, but not a very hairy guy? Porpoise. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if there is is one. For, there's jock, which is obviously like, like I just think like university and yeah. American football type person. Um, wolf. Is somebody who's um, uh, would have body hair, but be like really muscular, okay. not muscular, but like athletic muscular, okay. like t- toned or wiry type of thing. Um, daddy, um, <laughs> that's one thing I, I can't like. Like even this is what four years into being gay, and when somebody calls me daddy, like I still feel that just doesn't. Yeah. Oh, it's weird. No, it's not. It's ruined. Got anyone calling anyone daddy? It's just I don't know. I just can't get my head around it. Like it just. Happened to me a couple of times, like, and it's happened to me a couple of times, you know, where you can't exactly get away, like, you know, you just be like, oh, daddy, and it's like, uh, why, <laughs> you can't get away. Why, why, why you said that for, like, and plus, you know, I fucking don't really feel that I look like a daddy ever, like, do you know what I mean? I'm like 30 years old, it's like, ah, you're supposed to be like, a, yeah. like an old boy, like, Aye. Jesus. But yeah, I do get that quite a bit, like, yeah, it's, there's a lot to learn. Moving on that word, like honestly, like when I, when I came out at 28, I felt like a 17 year old again. Yeah. And like, you know, a lot of fun, like, you know, and, and enjoyed myself and um, learned a lot of shit. And I was mad, like, like mad. <laughs> Visited mad. the otters down a couple of times. I, I always say to people, like, one of the best things, like, you know, about being gay is being part of the, the community because it's yeah. unreal. Yeah. Best party scene, the best times. You walk into any bar, any nightclub, and yeah. you're like walking into pe- the friends. Even though you, I, I could go over to London, Manchester, Edinburgh, or Glasgow, anywhere, just walk in. If it's a gay bar, you're walking into a group of friends. Like, yeah. you, that's, you don't get that sort of, you know, anywhere else. Yeah, it's thing, a, like, you know? yeah I'm sure it's just very inclusive and like a safe space, nearly. Yeah, like I, I kind of like, I kind of get used to going back to straight clubs again now that I've been yeah. and it's not that I'm like it's only like gay clubs it's things like you go in the gay like I, I love to dance like I can't dance like but I love to dance like and the minute you get smashed you're on the dance floor and everybody's dancing together and all it's great crack and all the rest of it I forgot about this year the last time I went to a, a straight club and done the same thing went in got drinks went up on the dance floor started dancing away and then you got the look up and down from all these dolls and you're yeah. like, oh, fuck, I'm in a straight club again. Like, you know, yeah. they think you're trying to come on to them and shit. Uh, like, you know, and you just wish you had a big T-shirt going, <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> just so they know. They're watching you twerking and poor, <laughs> <laughs> poor Bailey's over your tits. And you just, <laughs> like, this guy's hitting on me. 
<laughs> Fuck's sake, can't go anywhere. Hashtag me too. I <laughs> know. Oh, and you're like, Jesus, even if you were, even if I was straight. <laughs> I, like, sometimes that pisses you off too. You, think some, you know, you get looked up and down or whatever. But, uh, you know, but, uh, but hold on a minute, like, you uh, know, yeah. <laughs> do you know who I am? <laughs> yeah. Don't flatter yeah. yourself, love. The gayness isn't even the problem. <laughs> you fucking monster. <laughs> Oh, oh fuck. fuck! What were we gonna say about so there before we fucking went off on a whole? I we fucking um, but you see, like that, that's another thing. Like one thing I learned as well. Like, do you know the way with guys, um, like lesbian porn's a big thing. Aye, it's the exact same with women. Like with women, gay porn's a big thing. Right, and like I I learned that so many women around the man on man. The first time, sort of. I remember um, John came over here and we went to Filthy's for mm -hmm. a couple of drinks and <laughs> this dog comes up and, um, you know, and says to me, she says, uh, is your friend single? Yeah. And I was like, no, he's not, love. And my husband uh, friend? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, my, my, mate, my mate really fancies him. And I was like, no, he's, he's not single, pet, he's not single. And then they went away and then the dog came back again and all and started chatting up, chatting up and all. And, and then, um, John says, giving off those vibes, was he? Like, <laughs> big, big pimping. And the two of us just sat together, type of thing, like, you know, and she kept trying and kept trying. And she's like, um, well, one of them said something like that. And I was like, look, love, um, he, he's my boyfriend. Like, he's like, we're, we're not interested. Yeah. And then she fucking turned around to me and she's like, see if you're not interested, you just have to fucking say, you don't want to lie about it. And she got up and pure stormed off. And I started at the jaw and I was like, Jesus, she took that bad. Like, just fully didn't, I thought we were just trying to pie her off, you know? Jesus. So that was all right. Like, see, like, um, oh, if, a while later. I full of these lies <laughs> just to get rid of me. A while later then, I turned around and I stuck the lips in John and your doll seen it and she came over like a dart. She's like, oh my God, you's our gay, you's our gay. And I was like, yeah, I did say, I did say, oh, kiss again, kiss again, though. And I was like, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. She's like, where are you guys staying tonight? Where are you guys staying tonight? And then John went to tell her, I was like, shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and like, Phil asked if she could come back and all. And like, and then wow. I sort of learned after that, that, you know, uh, through friends and stuff, and like just generally having chats, you know, that it's sort of the, the same, but the other way around, like, you know. Wow. Imagine that. What if you'd have said yes? Yeah, we're just we're staying the old. Uh, <laughs> it was the same problem as the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Smash that bed down. Uh, <laughs> fuck's sake. Uh, anyway, no more of that because you're you're married now. Yeah. So that was the first ever. So there was like you could get like a civil partnership here. Yeah, well, that last year... But was, the church wasn't recognising the fucking... Yeah, we got, they got the... Last year, they managed to get the stage where you're also allowed to get married in Northern Ireland. Uh, I, got, I came and played, like, was it February 2020 or something like that there. Um, the last piece of the the, the quality was um, that the, you could carry out religious same-sex marriages, um, which, to be honest, you know... It was, it was fought for a whole time and I think at the end of it it ended up that basically if you want to marry somebody um, if you want to marry a same sex couple in a religious as a religious celibate you can but it's not going to be forced in them who don't so yeah. like in my mind I was like what the fuck's the problem with that then you know that means that people who want to do the marriages can yeah. people who don't want to do it are not going to get pushed into stuff they don't want to do so fair's fair but to be honest we didn't know anything about it like we um we went with a family minister um, because he has a good connection with the family. In Stephen Ames from Harbour Faith Community um, runs a cool wee church, like like cool wee church. Like yeah. I, I went up to see him at it, and the whole church is just sofas. It's like you've gone into DFS. There's just <laughs> sofas everywhere and like a wee band stage, you know. Oh, wow. and you just sit back in the sofa with a coffee tea or shop. A coffee. <laughs> it is. It's a coffee is shop. Fuck, I you make sit coffee. back with a tea or a coffee and they they gig and they play things and all. It's very modern style of a yeah. church, like you know. Obviously, it is with Marian Gaze, but like um, <laughs> the Marian Gaze sounds like an old uh, soul singer. <laughs> <laughs> right <enough. laughs> But we we didn't know much about it, and then. Um, we were told we were the first one, which is a bit of a surprise. Isn't that crazy that you had to be told? You're like, oh, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> so they asked them um, if we would do um, 
if we let the media involved, like, we obviously didn't want any media or wedding and stuff like that, but we'd done a press release and um, it's good to see it, like, but it's easy it went viral, like, like there wasn't well, it's, a, a it's, you country know, in the world that didn't... It's fairly significant, really, yeah. like, um, but it, it's funny that you're, you're, you're like, it's not that big a deal to you because it, it's not really not that big a deal anyway. It's significant for this country and it's like progression, but yeah. it goes to show you how like, yeah, there's there's no big fucking like, unless you're some of those DUP ones from like Balmina where they're like, COVID was caused by <laughs> the <gays>. them allowing <laughs> the gays to get married here and it's punishment. And you're like, yeah, that's why they killed millions of people before it fucking got here. You know what I mean? Get your yeah. eyes on the same level, bro. <laughs> That's a weird look on her, that. Like, that's the one that looks like a thing off Ice Age, isn't it? What did you call that? We think, no? I was going to say, your guy fucking. Hey, hey you guys, no, okay. no. Yeah. No, that one's a mess. If anybody fucking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was about judgment from God. It's your face, bro. Aye. Don't do him many favours. Like. But yeah, it's, it's one of those weird things where it's like, it should just be normal. And it is just normal. But it's, it's just there, so like, fucking stupid that people like that can control it yeah. nearly or have have a say in it it's getting there it's good to see like you know fair play like i always say you know people ask me why i don't get more involved with sort of fighting for equality and stuff like that be like i'd be honest like home i didn't have patience for it i gob somebody like i don't know yeah. why they have the patience to sit in rooms with people like yeah. that and like remain calm and actually like, like, i i couldn't i just throw a table like, at them i like i honestly it boils my blood like you know like even listening to like any time they debate it and stuff like that, I'm like I can't, like I just can't listen to it. Like, but it is getting better. Like, there's a, a while ago there, there's was, was a mate that says to me like, you know, do you not think it's, do you, do you still think it's a thing? And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, you know, do you still think that, um, like Norman Ireland's not accepting and stuff, and that you know, there's still still not okay to be gay in Northern Ireland and stuff. And like, it has got so much better. And I think in the general you know, perceptions of people, like the majority of people are super cool with it and it's good that it's getting better, but I, I says to the fella, I was like, right, I'll tell you what, I was like, I'll give you 50 quid. I was like, if you go up um, Belfast City Centre and walk hand in hand with your mate, two guys, and do a lap of the City Centre walking hand in hand, I told me to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> like, why not? And he's like, why I'm doing that there? I was like, why not? He said, you just couldn't. And I was like, well, there's still a problem there then, isn't it? Yeah. This is the fact that you won't do that as a bet for 50 quid because you know yeah. the slating you'll get, you'll know the looks you'll get, you'll know how uncomfortable it will be, and you ain't even gay. Yeah. You know, you're a straight guy, like, you know what I mean? So I think that, you know... People are catching on now that, that you know, when people protest a wee bit too much, you're like, <laughs> what's going on, bro? <laughs> how, no one has the fucking energy for that much, like, active hate. Mm -hmm. I, I got a lot of it whenever I ran Lauren Pride. Um, there was a local minister, like, just was kneeling into the papers, like, directly about me, you know, and saying the most nastiest shit, and <clears throat> the bloody papers printed it as well, like, you know, and I was just like... A scandal. Yeah, and it was just like, why, what's what's this dude's story, like, you know, why, like, have you got that big an issue with yeah. it, like, but then, like, uh, you know, I... It I'm nearly always believer, pans like, out the same way, doesn't I, it? Oh, 100%. You, know? you just oh, tell. They, were, they rated us such and such, <laughs> and the guy's fucking getting spit roasted in a toilet. <laughs> Go for a meeting, and they're saying, brrrr. It's like, oh, it susses it out there. Oh, for fuck's but, sake. Nah, things are, I, I think things are getting better, like, and fair play to, you know, the, the people at Equality and I and the Rebo Project and stuff like that, like, they... Like the job they do, like fair play to them, like because I couldn't do it, like you know they do some brilliant work, like yeah. You asked me down to that pride that time, or host something or something, yeah. And I was like, man, they are scraping the barrel for LGBT <laughs> folk down in Lorne. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me down, <laughs> no, I thought like honestly, like I I I feel that <clears throat> over the years, like there's there's a there's a lot of people that, and i think it's just because but it's in general with with anything you know any sort of community you get a group of people that are overly the top sensitive about what you can say and how you can yeah. go on and all the rest of it like one of the things that that made me feel that when i when i first came out i noticed that, that in going to competitions and around friends and stuff like that everybody sort of felt they were in eggshells for a while and i i hated that because you know it's like growing up playing rugby and stuff like that like you always banter, you always take yeah. the piss out of each other. And I'm like, look, 
oh, big guy straw man, like that's pure material for you guys, like, you know, like yeah. use it, like, you know. And when it did get to the stage where like people were able to banter and take the piss and stuff like that, like it felt way more comfortable to me, yeah. like, but you can understand, you know, just by society nowadays, why some people are scared of saying the wrong thing and, yeah. you know, but like, I think over the years, like, you know, the things that you've done and the things that you've said, regards you know the gay community and you know having a dig at the DUP and the other stuff I think that has been massively supportive and it's made people who aren't from the community look in at it in a very realistic way activist <laughs> <laughs> no I appreciate that but I, I just you know as a comedian everyone gets it mm. you know if I was like if I was going hey, this fucking state of this guy and this woman here and then I'm like too scared and then you know this guy you know it's like yeah. that's that is a discrimination, yeah, yeah. you know? And I'm, I don't think I'm in any way bigoted out of full-blown laziness, mm. you know? I can't, like, could you be fucked? Oh, anyone that has problems with any of that stuff, you're like, how do you get up with that sort of energy? Mm. And someone brings it up and you're fucking, these fucking gays and these fucking foreigners and these fucking whatever, and you're like, bro, just, yeah. you fucking sad cunt. Like, it, it is a thing that, you know, <sighs> I don't know, like, I have a pretty busy lifestyle and, you know, majority of my day is spent looking after my own success, my businesses, my training. I wouldn't hate time to get involved with that shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I just don't understand how people have the, the, the energy or the time to, to care that much, do you know what I mean? Especially when it's doing you any harm, like, you know, especially when it's not doing you any harm or it's not affecting you in any way, shape or form, like, you know, yeah. why care? But that's... I mean, you could go down the whole fucking re religious argument of that, where it's like mm. people fucking. I mean, mm. a lot of times it's just people have nothing better to do. Yeah. But uh, we'll fucking we'll wrap this up very shortly. Tell us a bit about your. You, you do a lot of talks and stuff for like young folk. Mm. What did that come off the back of? Was that just your story or like? It was probably off the back of the, the Bear Strong documentary coming out because whenever Bear Strong documentary came out, available on Prime. <laughs> right. um, there was a bit of an influx of people um, messaging, looking help and support and stuff. Um, and obviously, like, you can't help everybody one on one and stuff. So we thought that the best way of going out and helping people is to go out and do seminars and talks and workshops and stuff like that. To be honest, like, done a bit in Northern Ireland, but the majority of it has been in the uh, down the south, England and the mainland and stuff like that. It, it just seems to be, even even though like mental health and stuff like that is like the worst in Northern Ireland, it, yeah. it seems to be the actual work put into it is also the worst. Do you know what I mean? Standard. They had done one, done one seminar in Dublin, and they had like half a dozen booked within two weeks after it, wow. like across here there, and everywhere, and it was just like. That, that was the first they heard of me and they listened to my story and then just booked left, right and centre. I wish that up here would and there is like, there's like schools, some schools and stuff like that up here are starting to do a lot more work and starting to like, but it seems to be that it's always the small people are doing the work and not the, you know, the, 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 the people up the ladder type of thing. Like, yeah, you know? that's, there's, they have bigger fish to fry with their fucking schemes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is there money in this? <laughs> no. Exactly. We'll fucking... Well, it's all good stuff, and um, we'll wrap it up there, and we'll go fucking. I'll try and lift some of these weights. Lift a big stone with half a, with half a bad back, but sure, <laughs> we'll see what happens. But thanks very much for chatting with me. No worries, we'll Mark. do it again sometime. I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> also, shout out to our OG of OG, original OG sponsors, FlowCBDLTD.com, set up by uh, some sound bros, friends of the show. Uh, who just wanted they, they just wanted people to feel good man and that's what that's what flow CBD does um, you throw it in as part of your your healthy lifestyle and it just it just helps grease the gears man you know you want to relax a little bit you want to reduce inflammation you want to get that supple warm feeling you got to get some CBD in your life it's a, it's a food supplement everybody should be taking it every single day and uh, this is uh, this is the gear they do gummies they do bath bombs and um, the name of that is Oceanus, but uh, if you look at the packaging wrong, it just says anus. So if you want an anus bath bomb from Flow CBD, hit them up. You might be at risk of falling asleep in the bath, but say nothing, okay? Uh, if you're on my Patreon, there is a pinned post at the top which gives you 
Uh, I think it's 20% off. Is it 10% or 20%? It's 10% off uh, your purchase. Um, if you if you buy it through the website and use that code. Um, I'm not going to tell you the code right now. It's a secret. It's on the, it's on the Patreon. It's for the patrons only. But yeah, flowcbdltd.com. Get all over it. And if you want to hook yourself up with some sweet fucking merch. People say merch. People say things like, man, I got your merch. This is a straight up clothing line now. The general apparel. Uh, get yourself hooked up. Um, we got a new order of these grey these gray shirts in, which I'm pretty sure I've got baby sick on. But you know what I mean? That's that's real life. It's real life apparel for real people. Um, is that the... Should that be the thing? I don't know. But they're available on colongettis.com until we sort ourselves out with the generalapparel.com. Um, but get yourself hooked up. Uh, also, if you're over on the Patreon, we do some exclusive drops over there. And you can uh, you can get your hands on merch way before anyone else gets gets their hands on it. So there you go, callguest.com for merch. And finally, if you want to go to my SSE show on uh, in September 2021, if the world opens back up, you can get those tickets uh, in any of the links on my Instagram, any of my bios, uh, the link to this podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, get yourself a ticket. They're also available uh, available at Ticketmaster.ie. So get all over it, guys. Buy everything. You'll be let out of the house mid-year, and you'll be just fucking gagging for some entertainment. Get on it, guys. Cheers. <laughs>